All right, God bless you. God bless you. Hello, everyone. You know, I, I, thank, I thank God for you. I just feel honored and blessed when you join me in the Spirit of God. So we're going to go ahead and get into this word very soon. And thanks. I want to say thanks for all your sacrifices and, you know, your giving to God. I mean, Sunday, your first fruit offering was coming in. And I just want to thank God for that. It's helping us to keep the ministry moving forward and all the things that God told us to do this year. So I want to just say thank you for, you know, giving your first fruit and those of you still, you know, plan on sending it in or however God told you to do it, do appreciate it. So I want you to realize that, hey, by that giving of that gift, you're going to be accessing the grace of God in your life. And so remember, God always give you grace favor before money. And so I just want to remind you that, hey, everything's going to be good, all right? Because there's going to be a fresh endowment of God's power upon your life. Amen. So just before, you know, we're going to get ready to get into prayer. I'm just going to believe God that he's going to lead us, you know, again by his spirit. And right now, this is a time to allow God to lead us, you know, by his spirit. I just keep hearing God say, okay, it's time to walk in the spirit. It's time to be led by the spirit. It's time to live in the spirit again. And so just want to encourage you with that. And let's just get ready, you know, to get in the word and just have a good time with God. So let's pray. Father, we thank you right now. We give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. We just welcome your presence, oh God, in each and, in each and every person's home or wherever they may be at. We give you thanks and all the glory and all the honor. We just thank you, Father. You've been so, so good and so awesome, so powerful. And we just thank you, Father, for everything, everything right now that you're doing. So we won't get caught up in the distraction, all the trouble. But we're just going to look to you and give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Well, once again, I want to say thank you for joining with me. And you know, it's time for us to you know, keep on believing God to get this coronavirus. I mean, it's got to go. I know I was um, putting on my, my blue jeans, haven't been, you know, doing a lot of walking around because they keep telling us social distance, stay home. And so I had to do one of those, you know, squat and pull up. You know what I mean by that? You know, so, you know, it used to be where I saw my mom when she's putting on some pantyhose, she always had to squat and pull up. And so never understood that method. And then I, my wife, when she's using those things, she squats and pull up. Now, I'm not using pantyhose, but these blue jeans, I had to squat and pull them up. So you understand what I'm talking about. We need to get back out, doing some exercise, get out there in the sun. But of course, we got to, you know, listen to the government and listen to all our officials. But whatever you can do, you know, keep working out, keep exercising. You're going to be doing what I was just doing, squat and pull up. So now let's look at back at chapter 2. Let's look at verse 1. Because the vision that the prophet received, it says that the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. The Lord Jesus Christ, he's on his way, and he's coming for you. He's coming for, uh, for us, the church. In verse 1, it said, I would stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he would say to me and what I would answer him when I am corrected. Then he says, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. Make it plain on the tablets that he may run who reads it for the vision yet for a point in time. But at the end, it will speak and it will not lie, though it tarries wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. And he's referring to Jesus. He won't tarry to get the righteous out of this world in just in time. And then it says in verse four. Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. So I want you to see a key point here. God is telling Habakkuk and us two keys here. We got two people that he's referring to. God's referring to the just, which is the righteous believer who must live by his faith in God. And then he also talks about the proud, the wicked unbeliever, and which we know they must repent and must repent very soon. So we, two, two, we see two people here, the believers 
and the unbelievers, the just and the wicked, the proud and those who's going to live by faith. Now, that's important because uh, I want to talk to you about two keys about faith, two keys or two reasons for faith. So now, faith is the only way what produces the will of God in your life. And say that again, faith is the only way and what produces the will of God in your life. So God wants everybody to be saved, right? And none to perish. But unless they believe, they will perish. But it's the will of God that none perish. But what does it take? Faith in God that will produce the will of God where they can be saved. Now, Jesus has given us, you know, justification by faith and the authorization, the rights, the keys to access his grace through faith. Now, I want to talk to you about those two key points. So let's go again. Let me remind you that you and I, we was justified. That means we were saved. So let's look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. I'm going to read this from the Amplified, the classic Amplified. And I want you to really hear this word because this is going to bless you because you're living in the right time and you're the right people and you know what to do. You and I are required to live by faith. There's two keys here that I want to bring to your attention why it's so important to live by faith. So number one, we're going to already see we were saved by faith. It says here in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, it said, Because of, in order to satisfy the great and wonderful intense love with which he loved us, even when we were dead slain by our own shortcoming and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. Now, I don't want to rush this here because I want you to understand how much, I mean, how much God loved you. For him to give up his son, his only begotten son, to die for our sin, it shows that he has this wonderful and intense love. His love hasn't changed for you. No matter what the world's going through, he still had this intense love for you. Glory to God. Then he says, he gave us the very life of Christ himself, the same new life with which he quickened him, for it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. So I want you to see this thing about faith. One of the key elements of faith is this where you, you, you receive your salvation. You receive your salvation. This wonderful, amazing God, he loved us so much that he gave his son for us. And I want you to see this, this important here because it said that you and I were saved. We have this thing called salvation. And we can't forget about that. I mean, I know there's a lot going on. I know there's a lot of tension. But you forgot, and I'm forgetting too, that we're, we've are we been saved by grace through faith. We have this God who loves us so much that we have this relationship with him. And it's through this salvation that I want to start you know, talking to you more about. And then the next verse says, And he raised us up together with him and made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him. Now, remember I told you the last you know, the, the couple of days ago how Jesus had been set down at the right hand of the Father. He, he gave us that privilege to sit down next to Jesus. So no one sits there unless they are victorious. And that's why I'm telling you, you are victorious no matter what you're going through. Then it says here, in, heavenly, in the heavenly sphere, by virtue of being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. Because you're in Jesus, you're victorious. Because I'm in Jesus, I'm victorious. And then he says here, I love this here. He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come, the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace. Now we're going to talk about grace, I'm hoping, at the end of this here. And it says here, his free grace his unmerited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart toward us in Christ Jesus. That's why Habakkuk get this vision from the Lord. Hey, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. And it says here, for it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, 
that you are saved. I want to bring back, I want you to bring, I want to bring you back to your foundation, your roots. When we didn't have Jesus, I mean, we was crazy. But now that we have Jesus, we have this hope and this ex, ex, expect, expectation that everything's going to be all right. Now, he says here, we've received this free grace, this God's unmerited favor, and that we are saved. And it says here, we're delivered from judgment, watch this, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Wow. And it says, through your faith. That's why I said there's two key reasons right now that I want to talk to you about faith. And one of them is that by faith, you and I, we were saved. We receive Christ's salvation, according to the Amplified Bible. And then it says, and this salvation is not of yourself, of your own doing. It, it came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. So God gave us this gift called salvation that we access it by faith. We get 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 it by faith. Now it says, not because of works, not the and it says, not the fulfillment of the, of the law demand. It says, least any man should boast. So now, let me tell you what sozo means. Sozo means, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let me just pray real quick. Father, we thank you right now. We give you the glory. I come against any attack on any person right now. And I command it to leave in the name of Jesus. Father, I send forth your word to heal. Father, I send forth your word for breakthrough. Father, I thank you that angels are protecting. Father, I thank you that we got the victory over the adversary. Father, I give you the glory and all the honor. Nothing's going to hinder your power. Nothing's going to hinder. We are saved. We are saved. We are saved. We are saved. We are saved by the blood of Jesus. We are saved because of Christ himself. And Jesus, you're our Passover. you the God who keeps us protected. So we give you glory. We give you all the honor. In Jesus' name, glory be to God. Now, this faith that we have in Jesus, I want you to realize we got the salvation that he, that he promised. So now, sozo is... This is, the, this is the Greek word, which means this salvation that God gave us. Number one, it means that you were healed, you are cured, it means preserved, you kept safe and sound. See, this is what you got to tell the devil. I already have faith and I'm already saved. Since I'm already saved, I have this here, you know, this thing that God gave me. Through Jesus Christ, I am healed. I'm cured. I'm being preserved. I'm kept safe, and also I'm, I'm also sound. So the other word for zo sozo that Jesus gave us is called your rescue from danger or destruction or your deliver. So all you got to do is throw in the face of the enemy, I'm saved, Satan. I understand what G Jesus gave me. Through my salvation that Jesus gave me by faith, I've been rescued from danger or destruction, and I've been delivered from you. The Bible is clear that God has delivered you from Satan. Satan doesn't have the right to touch you or the coronavirus. You got to understand that because of the salvation is already done, that you've already been delivered from destruction. You've already been delivered from danger. You've already been delivered from the hands of the enemy. The Bible talks about you've been rescued. So that's what Jesus did. He came and he rescued us and he gave us this sozo salvation. So all you got to do is throw, the, throw in the devil's face. This is already done. I've been delivered from you. I am, you know, I've been rescued from you and no danger or destruction can come against me. Then the next thing I want you to see that sozo mean is the word that means, you know, you're saved from physical death by healing. You're saved from physical death by healing. You're saved from physical death by healing. So this is why you should this is what you should speak to the coronavirus or anything that try to attack you. Because Jesus died for you and died for me. He gave us this thing called salvation, which is the Greek word sozo, which means that I've been saved from physical death 
by healing. So truly, physical, physical, what is just sickness, does not have the right or the power to take out a believer who knows what Christ gave them. Now, I know there may be many people have died, good believers, strong believers, and they passed away. But I want you to realize that it's not the will of God for them to pass away because of sickness. That is not the will of God. And sometimes you don't know why it happened. Sometimes you don't know what the last, you know, what happened between, the, between that person and God. They may have decided, I'm done, I want to go. So, so, you can't, so you can't base everything sometime on what limited knowledge that we have. But according to the word, we know that's true. The word says what Jesus did for us when he saved us, he saved us from physical death by healing. You know Isaiah 53, he was wounded for your transgression, he was bruised for your iniquity. The chastisement of his, our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. So we stand in our salvation, and every time the devil wants to try to take it, we stand in our salvation. Jesus defeated him. That's why you should claim your salvation because Jesus defeated him. And because Jesus defeated him, Satan can't take away what belongs to you and what belongs to me. Jesus defeated Satan and by his stripes you were healed. So Satan don't have the right to take your, your healing because in order for him to take your, your healing, it's almost like he's taking a part of your salvation. He gets none of that. He, you know, he don't have any part of that. Jesus' blood, Jesus' body defeated the enemy. So stand your ground. God, I'm in covenant with you. I were healed. This is part of the salvation you know, package. So there, this is part of your benefit of being saved. The next thing I want you to see, it says the word saved is also means saved from spiritual death by forgiving sins and its effect. Now, this is important, too. Because Satan always likes to use sin or get us to sin and then trap us into something and then we end up having, you know, some form of sickness or some form of attack. But the word salvation means you're saved from spiritual death by forgiving sin. So whatever the sin you were in or I was in, when we, when we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, that blood washed away all our sin Therefore, there is no proof or evidence. There is nothing that Satan can bring up, you know, as fact or truth against you because Jesus' blood washed it away. So the Bible says that he, you know, he washes away all the handwriting and ordinance that was against us. And so he took it to the cross, you know, because he went to the cross for us. But I want you to see there is no proof or evidence that Satan can bring against you and hold you in guilt because of sin. Besides, 1 John 1, 9 says, you know, if we sin and we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God is faithful to you. He's faithful to me. He honored that blood that Jesus died and paid for our sins. And when we say, God, okay, you know, I've been forgiven, I've been given spiritual, I've been, I've been saved from spiritual death by the forgiving of my sins and its effect. So, in other words, sometimes we see in scripture, we see sin, and we see because of the sin, the person has some type of, you know, it opened up the door, of, you know, to Satan in their lives. So, if you don't doubt that if you confess your sin, that God will forgive you, then you should also be in faith and says, whatever the results of this sin is going to be eradicated and removed too. See, you don't have to pay, you know, you don't have to pay the penalty. Jesus paid the penalty. Jesus paid the penalty. I want you to understand this here. What the adversary wants to do, if you sin, he wants to get you in guilt and condemnation. The blood of Jesus take care of the guilt and condemnation. Because as long as you feel like you, you earn this or you d deserve it, then it's, it's, it's Satan going to keep that on you. You got to break that strategy of the enemy. You got to realize the power that's in the blood of Jesus. And you got to stand on the word, I've been saved from spiritual death by the forgiving of my sins and its effect. So this is how God breaks the power and the bondage of the enemy.
He not only forgive us of our sin, but he destroys the effect of it. Because if I keep walking with a sin conscious or being guilty or feeling condemned, the devil is going to keep using it against me. It would be hard for me to believe that this God who loves me, that he's willing to bless me. So that's why I want to take this time out to get us back to this, this two reasons of faith. Number one is because you were saved and I was saved by faith. But I really want you to see this, what, what salvation really brought to us. So you don't have to go to toe-to-toe -to -toe with the enemy. Salvation was bought through the blood of Jesus. You can stand your ground and say, I plead the blood of Jesus against you, Satan. I am saved. I am healed. I am delivered from you. Sickness belongs to Satan. It, do not, it does not belong to, to the believer. You, you, we just went through a Passover. Jesus, he was our Passover. His blood still protects you. His blood still, his, you know, his blood is still, you know, there for you. So watch out. Just tell the devil, hey, I'm covered in the blood. I'm protected by the blood. I'm forgiven by that blood. I can draw near to God by that blood. There's power in the blood. You got to speak what that adversary don't want you to say. He don't want you to say, I'm, I'm saved, sanctified, and I'm washing the blood of Jesus. I have no guilt of sin or condemnation because I'm washed by the blood. I'm also saved by that blood. I am saved. I am saved. Sozo came into my life. It delivered me from you, Satan. I don't belong to you. I belong to Jesus. And so you got to put the word on him. You got to make sure that he knows that you know your covenant rights. And then I want you to see also this word sozo means it gives new life and to cause to have a new spirit. See, when you guys say he gave you a new spirit, you was born again. Bible says, you know, in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, you know, behold, all things have become new. If any man who is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. You have a brand new spirit. You've been born again. Christ lives in you. And I want you to realize there's a new life for you to live. Don't be limited by your flesh. Don't be li limited by your, your, your mind. I want you to start walking in the spirit, living in the spirit, and being led by the spirit. And when you start seeing that there's a new life, why? Because there's a new person inside. You're not your old self. You're not an old sinner saved. You are now a new believer. You are, one translation said, you are a new species that never been created before. You are now a new species, and you are a speaking species, one translation talks about. And so you got this new life. So don't go back to the old life. Don't start looking at what you used to be. Start looking at who you are right now. And now Sozo gave you a new life. You, when you got saved, he gave you a new life. There's a new life for you and I to live. And then the next thing I want you to see about Sozo is use of one restored relationship with God through faith. See, your, your faith causes sozo to come into you, and it restored, my God, a new relationship with God. Remember, because of Jesus, we now get a father, and he, and he loved us so much. But I want you to see this salvation package. There's so much more than Christ did for you through salvation that I won't be able to get into all of it. You know, I won't be able to get into all of it. But I want you to see, hey, the power of the blood and the power of the gospel, it says that we're not ashamed of it because it is the power of God unto salvation. So when you hear the gospel being preached, the power of God is also being released and it delivers you and it delivers me. Right now, I'm believing you're getting delivered. Why? Because I'm, I'm preaching here the power of the gospel. What Jesus did on the cross is still real and active. And Satan don't have the right to touch you or mess with you. That body doesn't belong to Satan. That body belongs to Jesus. He's the greater one living on, in the inside. If he tried to trespass, you got you to tell him, I know that I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Remember that Passover, when God came through, you know, the land of Israel and they had the Passover, the destroyer came and also God came. 
And God said, every time I see the blood, I will pass over and I will protect where the enemy keep moving. Same thing. Jesus is our Passover. He didn't leave you. He didn't forsake you. He's still protecting you. He's still, you know, you, you're protected by his blood. You got to let the devil know, I know I'm protected by the blood. Remember, the Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. You got the blood, now speak to the adversary. I'm, you know, the blood of Jesus protecting you. I'm saved by grace through faith. I know my God, he's watching over me. I know that I'm, I've been set free from the power of darkness. I know that God loves me and I'm free. I am saved. See, some of the believers are not living the saved life. See, Habakkuk saw in the spirit that there's a people who's going, the just shall live by his faith. Why does he live by faith? Because he obtained or he got his, he got his salvation through faith. That's why I don't want you to forget the importance of faith. Two key elements about faith. One is that you were saved by faith through grace. So now, I've got to wrap this up. The power of the gospel is at work with you right now. You got to tell the devil, hey, I've been delivered at the cross. I've been saved by Jesus. That blood has power and I know it has power. When I declare it and plead it over my life, over your life, it's activated, it's stirred up, and no, no devil wants to come your way. Now, we're going we're gonna to go ahead and pray. Just on me right now, just a pray. Uh, my God, see, the adversary has no right to bother you or touch you. Father, I give you thanks and praise. Lord, I give you the glory and all the honor. Father, I thank you that for the, my God, for the honor of being called your sons and daughters. Father, I pray for each and every person right now that everything that the, the, the devil been trying to do, it be broken right now. Lord, we're saved. We accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. You gave us salvation, healing. You gave us, my God, a soundness of mind. You keep us safe and you rescue us from danger, destruction. So we thank you for deliverance from the adversary. Whatever the people need deliverance from, whatever the bondage, whatever the satanic strategy, I pray right now against every attack in the name of Jesus. God, I release your blessing upon them. I recommend every form of curse, of sickness, or disease, every form of curse that's been trying to operate against them. I break it by the authority that's in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, I thank you. Anybody need rescue, I thank you. You're rescuing the church and you're, rescu you're rescuing them in any situation. Father, I thank you that, my God, my God, that no form of sickness or disease can dwell in their body. Father, I thank you that you're keeping them safe from the coronavirus. We thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus for forgiving all our sins, forgiving all our sins and its effect. So anything that's trying to hold the people back, because of past sin. I break the stronghold of it right now in the name of Jesus. I speak, oh my God, I speak liberty and freedom before you right now in Jesus' name. Satan has no right to hold you in any form of bondage, any form of fear, any form of sickness, any form of poverty. He has no right over your life. I break it right now by the power and the anointing and authority that's in the name of Jesus. I command you to be loosed right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that the believer is going to start living this new life, a life of faith, a life of faith in power and dominion. Father, I give you thanks and the praise that this relationship that we have is a faith relationship with you. It was a, it's a faith relationship that we have with you. And we give you the glory, O oh God. We give you all the praise. Father, we thank you for everything that you're doing and everything that you have done in our lives. And we bless you right now. We praise you right now. We give you thanks and all the glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Thank you for, answer, thank you for tuning in. Thank you for all the giving that you're doing. Thank you for, you know, keep, you know, keeping, you know, keeping, you know, the giving going your faith going. Thank you for your help. Thank you for all that you are doing. We do appreciate you. We love you. And hopefully I'm going to see you later today on Facebook for our Wednesday night Bible study. 
All right. So I'm going to pick this up, you know, tomorrow and give you the second key why faith is so important. All right. Love you. And God bless. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.